This video will cover the topic graphing a square root function problem type 1. Let's break it down. First let's look at a typical square root function and its graph. y equals the square root of x. Let's choose a few points to plot on this graph. We cannot enter negative numbers into a square root function, so let's use 0 and a few positive values for x in our table. Now let's find the corresponding y values for each of these x values. The square root of 0 is 0. The square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 4 is 2. And the square root of 9 is 3. This tells us that the graph of this function will include the points 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, and 9, 3. The complete graph of this function looks something like this. How can we shift this graph vertically? If we add or subtract a number outside of the radical, that causes a vertical shift. For example, if we were given the function y equals the square root of x plus 2, the graph would look like our original graph, but shifted up 2 units. We can check this using our table. Using the same x values as before, we see that this new function yields the following values. When x is 0, y equals 2. When x is 1, y equals 1 plus 2, which is 3. When x is 4, y equals the square root of 4, 2, plus 2, which is 4. And when x is 9, y equals square root of 9, which is 3, plus 2, which is 5. As the table shows, each of our original y values is increased by 2 when we add 2 to the function. So the graph moved up two units. If the number were subtracted instead of added, this would cause a downward shift. How can we shift this graph horizontally? If we add or subtract a number inside of this radical, this causes a horizontal shift. For example, if we were given the function y equals the square root of x minus 3, this would cause a shift of 3 units to the right. Why is it to the right? It's minus 3. That seems like it should move to the left. Great question. Let's make a table to figure it out. The domain of this function is all values of x greater than or equal to 3. Since if x had a value less than 3, we would have a negative number inside the radical. Let's choose a few values of x, starting with 3, and then using a few numbers greater than 3, to enter into our table. Now let's see what the corresponding y values are for each of these x values. The square root of 3 minus 3 is the square root of 0, so this equals 0. If we use 4 for x, 4 minus 3 is 1, the square root of 1 is 1. If we plug in 7 for x, 7 minus 3 is 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. And if we choose 12 for x, 12 minus 3 is 9, the square root of 9 is 3, just as we see in this graph. If we compare both of these functions, we see that they have the same y values, but the x values associated with those y values are different. For example, if we choose x equals 1 for our original equation y equals the square root of x, we obtain a y value of 1, which is the same y value we obtain if we choose x equals 4 in our function y equals the square root of x minus 3. In fact, for any value of x that we input into the equation y equals the square root of x, we must choose an x value that's 3 greater in order to obtain the same y value from the function y equals the square root of x minus 3. That's why everything is shifted 3 units to the right when we subtract 3 from x. So if we add a number within the radical, the graph of the function is shifted to the left. And if we subtract within the radical, the graph of the function is shifted to the right? Exactly. But if we add a number outside of the radical, the graph of the function is shifted up that many units. And if we subtract a number outside of the radical, the graph of the function is shifted down that many units? That's right. And if you ever forget, you can always form a graph by making a table, plotting several points, and then connecting them with a curve. Overall, it sounds like you understand graphing a basic square root function.